hey, congrats on the show. It's really, it's it's fantastic. It's, it's, it's extremely funny. And that's kind of why today I wanted to talk primarily about comedy, if that's okay. Because you've done a lot of amazing stuff. I mean, a lot of my favorite shows, you know, It's Always Sunny, uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, really amazing stuff. How do you go about infusing the superhero genre with comedy? Where do you start? Well, luckily the source material, the original comics are really funny. And- yeah. She, as a character, is full of wit and self-referential humor and self-awareness, and she breaks the fourth wall. And so all of that humor was really baked into the project from the inception. Um, mm. And then, the, you know, the big challenge for me as a director was taking, you know, taking what comedy needs, which is a safe space for actors to improvise and play and and just kind of goof around and go off script and explore their characters, but balancing that with the scope and grandeur um, of the visuals that we've come to expect from a project that fits into the MCU. And so yeah. the constant series was this, you know, it was really finding that balance. Like how do we make it look big, but also allow the actors to play around? How do you find that balance? Because I mean, you've got on the one hand, there's a dead celestial halfway across the world and Thanos is snapping. Like all this horrible shit has happened. And on the other hand, Jennifer is a lawyer. I mean, that seems kind of small potatoes, right? So, because what I've noticed about Jennifer is she is simultaneously uh, aware of that stuff and also sort of sneering at the institution. You know, she kind of sees it as people playing dress ups. Her job is serious. Theirs is not. And that is an understandable thing, but do you think she's going to come full circle and realize that there is inherent worth in both? Or are you going to keep her in that kind of in-between space? Well, I can't give away too much, but of course. <laughs> I think you've I think you've hit on exactly what the arc of the character is, which is that she's worked really hard to create a life um, that she believes in and feels strongly about and wants to live. And now she's had these powers thrust upon her and she resists them and resists them and resists them. But the more she's forced to inhabit this She-Hulk, the more you start to see her enjoy certain elements of it. And then mm. she does have to question what her responsibility is, you know, having these powers that only a few select group of people have. And so I think that's what's really interesting about the series is her reluctance to engage with something that usually superheroes are pretty gung-ho about being superheroes. Yeah, see, I thought unless we're talking environmental or human rights lawyers, lawyers are the bad guys typically, right? Um, well, we we always said that she worked, um, you know, at the beginning of the series in the in the, um, you know, in a more altruistic law firm, yeah. where she, you know, where she wasn't in it for the money. And then interestingly, she gets, you know, this job at the superhuman law firm, which is very fancy and very, you know, all the bells and whistles. And that's part of her struggle is that's not exactly the life that she'd crafted for herself. I'm also looking at the kind of templates that these shows lean on. Disney Plus shows, you know, Marvel shows typically go, all right, let's say Hawkeye is a feel good Christmas home alone romp and uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier is a Cold War thriller. But this is a show, show about a law firm. So what, what shows, what templates did you draw on to kind of um, to use as influences for this? Well, I think every law show ever made is part right. of what we baked into this. We want that familiarity. You know, those shows are comfort food to people. Mm -hmm. They have certain tropes and certain camera moves and certain um, elements that are kind of baked into, you know, what those shows are. And then we add these weird twists and these characters that you would never see. One inspiration for me was always Legally Blonde because it took all of, you know, the legal shows that we were used to watching and, and kind of injected it with pink and with energy that was so unusual. And yeah. so I, I look to that as a reference um, in the same way where we, we like embracing the familiarity of the genre, but then turning mm. it upside down on its head a little bit. Did have a touch of Boston legal, but if Candace Bergen could punch people through walls, that was kind of the vibe Absolutely. I got. You know, that's right yeah. on. That's my new. That's my new line. I'm stealing from you. <laughs> yeah, nice. What do you think the appeal of Jennifer is for viewers? Because she struggles with the notion that she is the She-Hulk. She is always defined in in relation to that. And this show is you get to kind of have fun, but you are playing tethered to a larger story. How how do you think people are going to relate to Jennifer? And how do you relate to Jennifer? 
I mean, what I love about the series format as opposed to the film format is we don't have a ticking clock plot. We don't have to get from A to B in a really fast way. We're allowed to linger in character. And mm -hmm. my favorite thing about the series is kind of taking a peek behind the curtain of the life of a superhero and seeing these really mundane, relatable moments. I mean, her going on dates is yeah. something we do not see every day in the MCU. You know, her coming home after a long day of work and taking her shoes off. You know, the films don't allow for these small little moments because they're so plot driven. And that's yeah. that's my favorite part of the series is who's who is this person and how do we get to know her in a really simple way? Well, how do you direct a She-Hulk? Because presumably she's not on, st I mean, okay. You're directing an actor, you're looking at the person, you're getting them to interface with their environment, you're sitting over and between takes talking to them. But how are you <laughs> directing someone who is, uh, you know, partially CGI and several feet taller than they actually are? Is that, does that break that, that kind of um, actor-director relationship for you? No, absolutely not. The entire philosophy of the CGI is drawing upon the performance of the actors. And so, yes. if, for example, when Mark Ruffalo and Tatiana are in a scene, there are certain technical specifications that we have to plan in advance, like the platforms uh -huh. that make them the right height. So the eye level is right. But beyond that, it's about tapping into their performances. And my job was to do everything I could to make it as normal as possible, you know, while wearing weird gray suits and having cameras in your faces. But sure. that that was the goal. And even in post, in the months of VFX and CGI creation, it was about how do we get back to those honest performances? And when you have actors like Mark and Tatiana and the rest of the cast, that's all you care about. But they're naturally comedic performers right I mean it must have been fun for them to completely cut loose especially in the I mean this show is really I cannot stress this enough it's a really fun funny show and it feels just really frothy and weird I kept getting kind of moments of you know in Fleabag where she turns to the camera or it, it, it just had a lot of kind of really joyous moments and tropes I guess what I'm curious about is how far do you push it because I've only seen the first four episodes how far do you kind of take those those threads Look, I think that grounding things in reality and in heart mm -hmm. and in human emotion allow you to go as far as you want. And that that to me is one of the fundamental rules of comedy. If it feels real and it's grounded, then you can really do whatever you want because real life is outlandish and outrageous and impossible. And, you know, you said earlier, you know, you've got Thanos and these giant universal things happening. And then you have this simple life of a lawyer. And that's how life is. We have terrible, huge events. And then we have little special moments that we live. And I think this show it reflects life in a very real way. And I think when you do that, then you're allowed to go pretty far with the comedy. I really hope she ends up in the Avengers, but I won't ask any more questions because I'm being given a wrap up. Can I just say, like, it's it's such a pleasure to talk to someone pushing the superhero genre to some strange places. And as a fan of your comedy, I think it's just, I think it's a match made in heaven. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. No problem, no problem. Well, thank you. And I look forward to seeing the rest of the series. Have a wonderful day. Bye.